Hi everyone. Happy Friday. Hope everyone is doing well. How's it going? So who we got? Wix by Gray CEO Queen Two is it two D thirty three? Then I got YouTube. Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Welcome to yet another live. I'm proud of myself. I've literally been going live every day for the month of May. I challenged myself. I told y'all. Oh, let me turn that down. I challenged myself. And it's been going great. I feel like you all have enjoyed it. Um, you know, you could tell me what you think, but, and not that I'm going to stop doing lives. I'm not going to stop, but I challenged myself specifically in May um, just because I wanted to just, again, connect with you all on a different level and really discuss a lot of the pain points that um, us candle makers go through and just start a conversation. Um, so I'm glad that I was able to connect with you all on this level. So today I am giving you all just a few tips on <clears throat> marketing strategies for your candle business. Um, there's so many different ways that you can market, um, your business. Um, um, it's just, especially when it comes to a saturated market, like the candle making industry, you just have to be a little bit creative. Um, but there's, there's ways to engage with your customers for sure. Um, so one of the ways is, um, a referral program, and that is something that you can set up in the back end of your website. Um, and you don't even have to really have a website, you know, like, let's say you started off with like an Etsy shop or, um, you know, you just want to start small and do it on social media. That would be a little bit more manual work. But if there's an app or something that you can install in the back end of your actual website, definitely take advantage of perks and referral programs. So I have a loyalty program, a referral program where they can get Lady C points. And um, the more they rack up, they can use those points and redeem them to take money off of their order. And so that is a way that I am building brand and customer loyalty. And um, it's almost like they're my family. I'm giving them rewards and perks um, for being a part of the Lady C community and supporting my business. So it's almost like a win-win. It's a win for me because I'm getting their money for their can for the candles, right? I'm making sales. And then it's a win for them because the more they shop, and refer others, the more that they can save. Um, so that is one way you can keep that in mind. Um, it's almost like a VIP list. Like, you know how it is when we shop at our favorite stores and we sign up for their email list. Um, and, you know, we rack up points or we get special promotions and things like that. So you want to nurture your customers, nurture your email list as you gain those um, customers and nurture them and make them feel special offer them exclusive perks and exclusive discounts um, just like we get in our email box when we shop with the brands that we love so that's one marketing one marketing tactic um, that you can use another one is sending out a customer survey so i follow up with my customers via email again i collect their emails and so i'll send out a blast email to my customers to my email list just to talk to them and um, just ask what they think. How are you enjoying your order? Would you mind leaving a review? Blah, blah, blah. Um, so, you know, you don't want your customers to feel like they purchased a candle from you and they never hear from you or never feel connected with you, um, especially with a product like our handmade goods as hand makers, handmade makers. Um, we you know, we, you, we want our customers to resonate with our products, right? Because our products mean a lot to us because we're hand making them. So you want to always follow up and just make your customers feel special, see how um, they like it and how they're enjoying the product and blah, blah, blah. Um, and send them a discount code or something, 
you know, like that if they take the survey or if they leave a review or something like that. So again, another way to just nurture your customers, nurture your, um, and nurture that email list. Another way is going live. So I know that it can be intimidating and scary, y'all. That's And again, that's one of the reasons why I challenged myself because I'm trying to come out of my shell a little bit um, because I want my business to grow. And one of the ways to get your business to grow is to engage, start a conversation, get the conversation going. And one of the ways you can do that is through video or lives. Um, lives definitely um, hit home quicker and they resonate with your customers a lot quicker because it's instant, it's more like real time and videos resonate just as well. So show them behind the scenes of you working on candles. Show them, I mean, you all see my stories, you all see my videos and things like that. Show them behind the scenes footage or show them how you package your orders, how you're labeling them. Show them with intention how you um, put their orders and things like that together. And that is one way to, you know, resonate and market your products, right? And, you know, anytime a customer, you know, you can also encourage um, customers to tag you, you know, with their with their candle. Take a picture when you get your order and tag me. And you can share that to your store. You can share that um, post or tag to your story and save it to a highlight on Instagram for reviews and things like that. So it's different ways to kind of showcase how much your customers are loving your product. And then also um, you're interacting um, with them as well. So there's nothing wrong with that. I know going live is, is scary though, cause I used to be nervous too, um, but it does help. It really, really does help um, get the conversation going. I talked to a lot of moms a lot of moms battling postpartum. Um, so I, I like talking to them and I'm glad that they reach out and then I reach out to them as well. And then of course, another way to um, market your products or market um, your business, your candle business is inviting customers into um, your personal life. So you don't, what I'm learning is to kind of warm up my brand a little bit and not be so Lady Simone Candle Co. and that's all you know about me. I do try to invite my customers into learning who the CEO is, my real life. And you can do that several ways. You could do that through a blog. You can do that through like weekend recaps on your social media. You can do that through your YouTube, if you decide to start a YouTube channel. And so depending on how your audience responds, um, cause you can also gain a lot of customers from YouTube. I get a lot of customers from YouTube. Um, you'd be surprised. And so you can just kind of invite them into your space and show the, 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 who the CEO is. So my brand is very, you know, mom based, postpartum based, mental health based. And so with my rebranding, I am consciously making an effort in my content planning to include my family more in my post, in my story, um, be a little bit more warm with my brand um, because I want them to see my why. And so it's important to kind of showcase your why. And if you can do that in post form or video form, that would be absolutely great. Um, so that's another way that you can market your product because it, it makes your customers feel like they're a part of your life. It makes them feel like, um, you know, they, they're a part of you. They get to know you on a diff different level than just someone who makes candles. Um, and of course, another way is always including any type of marketing um, in your orders. So I've mentioned before that you can do samples. I've mentioned before that you can include your business card. You can include things like a thank you card and a candle care card. You can include... Um, Think I, I said your business card, you can include like a little flyer. So I'm actually going to start including flyers in my packaging um, is literally just a cute little flyer that has my picture and it literally gives a snippet of my story um, and give them all of my information, like how they can contact me. And of course, reiterating my website and um, including a discount code in their order for the next time they order. It's like a thank you discount code. And so um, 
things like that that so when they open it they're literally getting the full experience they not only get something that they order they get what they order from you but they get little bonus treats so they get a little sample they get um beautiful station stationary like your thank you cards and and things sorry <laughs> my husband had walked in <laughs> um thank you cards and things like that so make your customers feel warm make them feel like their order is an experience and it was worth them coming to you and ordering from you so those are a few marketing strategies that i have implemented that i and that i still use and then i'm actually revamping a little bit to make my orders a little bit more personable warming up my brand a little bit and just kind of inviting them into um paris's space because my brand speaks to that family it speaks to that mom um and um you know it has to do a lot with motherhood and so i want to show a little bit more of that with my brand so think about where you want your brand to go and then just figure out different mediums and how you can market it you don't just have to stay on instagram you can start a youtube channel you can have a facebook business page and you can either venture over into TikTok. you can uh, share things to pinterest and relink it to your website there's so many ways that you can capture your audience you just kind of have to take the time to content plan and you know figure out what direction you want to go so i'm actually um, content planning for june so um i am working with my social media manager now and her and i are getting ready to utilize and tag in pinterest and TikTok as a part of my brand well, it's a part of my social media strategy. So y'all see my rebranding on Instagram and Facebook. So now I'm about to tag in Pinterest and Pinterest will kind of just operate in the background. She'll keep that kind of recycling and then, you know, do viable pins and re relink it to my website. So that way, that's why I took all new photography because I wanted to be super cute on Pinterest. Because, you know, Pinterest is all about the visuals. You know, you'll be scrolling on Pinterest and then you'll see like a nice picture. You'll click it and pin it, right? Or click it and see if you can buy it. So, um, and same with TikTok. So I do a lot of videos anyway. So I'm going to start repurposing some of my content and shuffle it onto TikTok to kind of drive that traffic and actually drive traffic to even Lady C Digital headquarters as well. Because for those who are interested in learning about making candles, you can draw them to that draw them to you in that way or just customers that are interested in your product you can draw them that way so don't sleep on the other social media outlets and then don't sleep on the different ways that you can market your product so those are things that you can think about and do so let's see if i have any questions how long have you been doing this um i've been making candles for over three years but i've just been in business for a year so how do you do all of this so it's just a matter of planning um i've talked in several lives about organization and content planning and so you can use a content scheduler like buffer or hope suite um you could actually even do a manual by just getting an excel sheet and just typing out the post that you want to write or post and attaching the picture to it so that way you can content plan your whole week and then each day or however many days you want to post on social media just copy and paste it into your facebook or instagram you can content plan so you just have to sit and think about what you want to post some of it can just be organic like a lot of my stories are just off the whim i don't really think about it i just post a story or post a boomerang um, but a lot of my posts are more planned and scheduled about what I want to say, what pictures I want to use. So I literally just sit and plan. And based on my brand and my mission, I create content out of it. So I use Hope Suite and um, for Lady C Digital HQ. And my social media manager has her own system on how she does Lady Simone Campbell Co. So I run this side, she runs that side. But I, you know, she's helping me generate TikTok and Pinterest as well. So I'll be, I've actually made a few TikTok videos this week and I've edited them. And so she's going to start rolling those out soon. So I'm excited to see the response <laughs> and hopefully they get better. I mean, I think they're good, but 
you know, we'll see. We'll see. Sometimes you don't know how your videos are going to perform. That's with YouTube or anything. You just have to go with it and see. Is there an app for reward programs? If So if you don't have a website, I mean, you can search and figure out if there's apps that you can use or it just depends on how you're selling your candles. I'm not sure what medium you're selling them through. If you're just on social media or if you're just on, or if you're just selling them word of mouth, I'm not sure. But I'm specifically talking about like if you have a website, there's apps that you can install on the back end of your store to actually have a rewards program. And you'll set it up in the back end of your store for it to show on your storefront. So that's what I have with Shopify. I've installed an app to operate my rewards program. And I just, and it operates on its own. Like I don't even have to issue rewards. I don't have to do nothing. It sends all the emails. It sends everything for you. So you just have to brand it, make it match your brand. And it just runs on its own. So it's real convenient um, for customers. They can rack it up and... They can use it to purchase can. They can use their reward points to take discounts off their pro off their purchase. So those are some marketing ideas to think about when you start your businesses or if you're in your businesses. Um, you can there's there's you can always gain a customer, but I'm always thinking about how to keep my customer right. So especially when it comes to candles. You know, you'll they'll buy a candle and you probably won't see that customer for a few weeks or another month or so because candles are made to last. And so your goal is how do I get that customer to come back? Um, you can continue to push and market for new footprints, but how do I keep that old footprint coming back? And so I'm always thinking of ways to nurture them and um, nurture them and keep them coming back like candles. Especially if you make a good quality candle, you're you're telling them like, oh, my candles last 40 to 50 hours. So if you you don't know how often they're burning it. So when's the next time you're going to see them in your store or shopping on your website? So it's like, how can I keep them from coming back? There's a few customers when I see their name shop up, notify me that they're placing an order or that they placed the order. I know for sure that they're ordering at least six to 10 candles at a time. So I know I'm probably not going to see those bomb customers for another few months. I just know it. But they've also bought six candles at a time. So I've made a nice little chunk of change just now. But how do I keep that that lady coming back to me, right? So I'm, think, I'm always thinking of ways. So she stay racking up points. <laughs> and she'll use them. And, you know, I include, she's one of my VIP customers. And I make her feel like a VIP. And so every time I know she's going to cash me out <laughs> with at least a six, six candle order, at least. <laughs> and it's a blessing. So you want to figure out a way to, to get that and get them excited. Did you set up your own Shopify website? Yes, I did. So everything you see on LadySimoneCandleCo.com, that is everything I did. Um, I purchased the Shopify template. They do have free templates. I started off with a free template, but with my rebrand, I wanted something different. So I had to go a little out, you know what I mean? Um, so I purchased um, a template on Shopify and I designed it myself. And, you know, you just go in the back end of the template and you just design each section. You add your brand, you copy in your brand colors and you just go bit by bit it's not as intimidating as it probably sounds because the template is there for you you just have to kind of design it and structure it the way you want it to look so so yep i redesigned it so thank you i appreciate it yes i wanted it to i wanted a whole new vibe so it's completely different from my old website new template new foundation, new colors, new pictures. It's more user-friendly. It's not as slow loading. Um, what else did I improve? I made sure I added more testimonials. Um, I've kind of restructured the product pages so that way they can see. You know how when you go to a product page and it says, you also may like, and they give you a list of products. I wanted to add that to kind of cross-sell 
Um, I redid my product descriptions a little bit so that it shows higher on the page. There were certain things that I just wanted to shift. So I also installed the app to where it says like notify me when in stock. So if I'm out of stock, they don't have to worry about emailing me like, hey girl, when my scent coming back, they can just get on the notification email list now. So there's certain things that I wanted to improve. I also added a fragrance quiz. So I have a cute little quiz on there that says what fragrance is perfect for you or what candle is perfect for you. And so it increases my engagement with my website. So they're staying on my website longer. Aha. So there's certain tactics that I just wanted to implement to improve my customer experience. So these are things you can think about. Is it the best website to use? Um, I, I can't really say because I haven't used all websites to compare. Um, I've only, I started with Shopify. Um, I've used, um, I've had a Wix when I had a blog a long time ago, um, but I didn't really play around with the e-commerce side of it, like WooCommerce or something that you can attach to WordPress, sites like those or hosting sites like those. I haven't played around enough with it to know what's good and what's not. Um, but sites like WooCommerce and um, Squarespace, those are just as good. Those are probably, you know, just as comparable to Shopify. I just chose Shopify because it is specifically designed for, um, you know, selling products. You know, whether you're a small store or a big store, they specialize in the back end technology to actually sell. So sometimes other sites you have to download plugins or, you know, they they don't have a lot of, I didn't really like all of the templates or you have to actually pay somebody to help you design it. So I just went with Shopify because it was just easy. And I'm not a techie like that. So I don't have time to try to figure all that out. I want to just sell my candles. And so whatever route I can take to make my plate easier I'm going to do it. And Shopify, I mean, you can design a pretty website just as well as you can on Squarespace or Wix, but there's nothing wrong with those sites. You can definitely use them. You just have to kind of self-teach yourself how to, you know, get your site up and running. So, and I'm sure they have customer service and IT guys or manuals or things like that, that you can walk through to figure out how to do it. So you just kind of have to and what and what's a good idea? You can like start a free trial with several different sites and see what you like. Like all of them always has a free trial. Like Shopify, they give you a 14, 14 day free trial. That's plenty of time if you set the time aside to play around with it and see if you like it. Go to another hosting website and see if you like it and start a free trial. So play around with some free trials and see what you like. Do you have wholesale orders out of state? And if so, who do you use for shipping? So no, I don't have any wholesale. I'm just now getting into wholesale. So I'm working out that stuff in the back end of my business with um, a couple clients. So, but um, I still use USPS um, for my shipping though. But I don't, I haven't dabbled full in the wholesale just, just yet. Like I'm in it, but I don't, not to the point where I want to share everything just yet. Like I'm still working out details, looking at, you know, contracts, working out deals, things like that. So I'll share once I feel comfortable that I have my process solid. Um, let's see. Is that the pro package? I was thinking of switching. Great idea. Thanks. Uh, do I, what package plan do I use? I think I started off with just basic. That's funny. I don't even remember what plan. Whatever, whatever is the middle. I think it's the middle package. If, if that's pro, then yeah. I can't even remember what it is. That's a shame. But um, I use the. I started out with the most basic plan. It was like twenty nine dollars a month, and so um, yeah. I just have the basic plan, and then I just upgraded to the middle plan. So whatever that next plan is, I just upgraded it when I did my rebrand. Only because, um, what was my reason for doing it? I don't, I upgraded for, oh, my, um, 
I upgraded because of my shipping threshold. So each plan, you have a shipping threshold. And I don't even want to try to confuse y'all with that. <laughs> but um, as I've been growing, I've been exceeding my shipping threshold. And so I needed to upgrade my plan to handle the amount of orders I was getting, which is why Shopify is pretty easy because the more your business grows, you can just upgrade to the next plan to handle that amount of uh, customers that you're getting. So I, you know, when you first start, you're not getting, well, at least I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting buku amount of orders like that. I was just rocking and rolling. And so now that I'm growing and rebranding, I was like, I'm gonna have to upgrade because I'm growing. Thank you, God. You know what I mean? So I had to kind of shift a little bit. So that's why. I'm sorry. I had to really think, like, why did I switch? I totally drew a blank. How long have you been into candles? So I've been making candles like three and a half years now. So I started after I had our son. So, yep. Any other questions? All right. So, yep, those are a few marketing strategies. Um, I hope you enjoyed this live. And I hope you all have a safe and restful holiday. Get some rest or have fun. Eat some ribs, whatever you're going to do. Um, and just enjoy your weekend. Unlikely expressions. How long before you started seeing a profit? Uh, so I've been in business for a year and I just started turning over profit a couple months ago. So. When you first start a business, it's normal. You'll have more expenses than you will money coming in. That's just the name of the game. So that is the name of the game. Unless you just take off immediately, God bless you. But that was not my story. I had a successful pre-sale, but I still had to market my butt off. And I'm still marketing my butt off. <laughs> And that's why I'm pulling on other social media outlets and I'm revamping my marketing strategy. Everything is not going to work the way you think it should work. And so sometimes you have to assess your numbers, figure out what you can do to bring in the traffic. That's any business. Any business owner has to constantly assess their plan so that way they can appeal to their audience. So. That's just the name of the game. And so I've been assessing, revamping, assessing, revamping. Sometimes you got to tap on a pro to help you. And so there's nothing wrong with that. You need help with content strategy, planning, all that stuff. Ask for help. Though, and that's the type of services that I offer. I like, I want to help. I want to help because I'm doing it. I've revamped. I've rebranded. I know what's working for me and what's not. I know what to look for and what not. You know, you just have, you'll learn your business as you operate it. You're not going to know everything right off the gate. You have to kind of get your, you sometimes you just got to operate and it takes some time to figure it out. So let me see. Any more questions? I think a website is the way to go. Yeah, and everybody feels um, differently. You know, some people aren't ready for a website and that's okay. I wanted a website because I wanted to showcase my story. And sometimes you're limited, you know, with marketplaces or, you know, like I said, you can definitely check out Squarespace or Wix or all those great e-commerce stores. Um, but again, I wanted to tell my story and highlight it in a different way. So. That's why I chose the website route. How long did, do you sell a fragrance before you decide it doesn't work? Again, you won't know until you do it. <laughs> the, some of these things you just won't know. So all of my scents I've been rocking with since I launched them last year. There's only one scent that I'm discontinuing because it's it was not a great seller over the past year. And that's something that you're not going to learn until you start selling them and looking at your reports and looking at your numbers and figuring out what's working and what's not. So one, so only one scent I'm discontinuing with my rebrand. And then two of my scents, I'm not getting rid of them. It's just more of a blended scent. So it's just more, it's like a, it's two scents together. So I just kind of revamped them a little bit. Um, because I love the way they smell with a blended fragrance. So 
but only one. And I mean, I've been in business for a year and I finally just gave up on it. I love the scent, but it just wasn't a great response with my customers. Okay, so I'll just make them for myself <laughs> and burn them at my house. <laughs> How, uh, let's see, how do you handle shipping costs? So um, that that depends too. I know y'all probably hate these answers, but it really just depends. It does. Um, no store operates the same. So it's up to you how you want to handle shipping. You can do where your customers pay for your ship, pay for their shipping, which is how I have it set up for me. So they check out, they pay for their shipping. Um, or you can offer free shipping and you'll kind of factor in that shipping cost into the price of your candle. So that way it's not eating into your bottom line and you can actually make a profit. And then you can offer free shipping or you can do like a hybrid approach where you can offer a flat rate shipping and include half the cost of your average shipping cost into the price of your candle. So that's something else you're not really gonna know until you start selling candles to figure out what your average shipping cost is. For me, I average between five and $6. Um, I think the most expensive shipping I paid was 13. And it that depends on weight, destination, and um, all of that stuff. So there's a lot of factors, but all of that stuff you work out in the back end of your store and you get it set up. Um, so it just depends. So you can fact, you can do a hybrid approach or you can have customers pay or you can eat the cost. Well, not really eat the cost, but include that cost in, your, in the cost of your candle. So if your candle is $15, you can charge $20 for your candle and then maybe just tack on a $4 flat shipping fee or something. So that way, the, you know, the flat rate probably looks more appealing, but you're not losing too much money because it's also included in the price of your candle. So you're kind of hiding the extra shipping cost. So there's, it just depends on what you want. Which company is the best supplier of raw materials? Um, I'm not sure if you've been shopping with suppliers yet, but I mean, I, I can't say which one's the best because I only shop with who I shop with. Um, so I don't like saying who's the best and who's not because I haven't tried everybody. Um, I use Candle Science. I use the Flaming Candle. I use Virginia Candle Supply. I use Lone Star and I use Pro Candle Supply. Now, Candle Science and the Flaming Candle are my two primary suppliers. And then the other ones that I listed, those are my backup suppliers. Should Candle Science and the Flaming Candle not have what I need in stock? And so I didn't learn that until again, I had to shop around or I saw that Candle Science was out of stock and I panicked and I had to find another supplier. And so I always recommend having at least two to three backup suppliers. Um, you just never know, see what who all offers a lot of the same of what you buy um, and just try their products in small quantities and see who you like. Uh, let's see. Thank you, y'all. When marketing candles, do you suggest video or just photos to start out? I say if you can do both, I say do both. People respond to videos a lot better. Um, you definitely want some nice photos. I mean, I just did a YouTube video on product photography, so you can check that out. I think it was on last Friday. So I would use both. I try to use both because people respond to video better anyway but you still have to have photos of your product. So I would do both. How many fragrances did you start with? I started with six. How many candles of each fragrance did you make to start? I started with six. So I made six cents and I would stay stocked up with at least six to eight of each, depending on what sold out. If I noticed that one fragrance was popping, I would probably keep more in stock of that one. So that's how I started. I just started with six. I kept it real simple because it was cheap. cheap. Well, I shouldn't say it was cheap because candle supplies are not cheap. But I'm saying it was easy to manage. It was, e it was easy on my beginner pockets. Let's just say that. How do you handle negative feedback? Take it like a G. <laughs> no. Take it like a CEO. Take it like a boss. Don't take it personal. Now, it, just, now it, it depends on the type of feedback. I will say that if it's tasteful and it's constructive, just take it on the chin and be like, cool, thank you for the feedback. Now, if people are just being blatantly nasty and rude. Um, I will 
professionally in the Lady C way that y'all have not seen <laughs> and um, make sure that um, I get that respect. And I kindly just dismiss that because I don't have time for it. I'm a businesswoman, like I don't have time for that. If you don't like what I'm doing or if you have an issue with it, I will respect you more if you can tell me in a constructive way. But if you're just gonna be rude and nasty, I'm not gonna respond to that. Um, hello, one more question. How do you handle family and friends wanting free candles? No, ma'am. <laughs> now, when I first started, sure. Now, no. Mm -mm. You gotta make your money. I love y'all though, bless you, <laughs> but I need my coin. And just cause they're your friends and family, if they love you, they'll support you. Boom. I just got my tart wax and about to start testing. Great, keep me posted on how it goes. Lady, is it Lady T keeping it 100? Yes, let me know how that go. What kind of vessels did you start with? I just started with um, straight sided jars from that I got from Candle Science. Yep. Straight sided jars from Candle Science. So you can start with whatever you like, whatever is appealing, whatever is your brand. Like I just, I just rebranded with new jars because I wanted something different. So, you know, just try and see what you like. You can order in small quantities, y'all. You can order like a case of 12 and test, you know, you won't know until you start testing it, right? So you gotta get out, you gotta put yourself out there and test. You won't know until you try. And sometimes you like your fragrances, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you like your jars and then you're like, oh, I don't like this style. So at least, you know, and then what you do is whatever the jars you don't like, burn them for yourself at home. You just won't sell them in your product line. But y'all, all my old jars, I still have two boxes up there. I bet you them is mine. And I'm gonna make some candles for me. <laughs> but I don't use them for my new products, right? But those are mine. I'm gonna just now those I will give to my mom or my family. Like y'all can just have these because I'm not selling those. So there's a bunch of testing candles that I have in my in my candle thing. Now those I will be like, go ahead, sissy, go ahead, mommy. You can have those because those were just testers. But my actual candle products, y'all love me, y'all gonna buy a candle the full price, unless I'm having a sale. <laughs> Cause I need my money. <laughs> it's expensive running a business. Okay. For real. What's the best wax to use wax melt? So, um, you can use four, six, four, you can use four, 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 you can use four, nine, four. I hope you're getting this, uh, brand, brand 8124. So four, six, four, 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 nine, four and eco soya. Those are, those are good for, and you can also use, you know, other blends, um, you can even venture into the paraffin if you don't, if you, if you're cool with that. Yes, period. Okay. No, period with a T. Yes. Your family and friends, they love you. They should be proud and they should buy your candle at full price. Like what is this with the discounts? Um, no, I'm a business owner. Respect that. Now, when I have a discount, I'll holler at you. <laughs> but until then, you shop like everybody else shop. <laughs> Unless you just made a bunch of candles for fun, then be like, here, mommy, you know, here, cousin, you know, here, Uncle Tootie, whatever. And here you go. I said, Uncle Tootie, Aunt Tootie, whoever. Then you can have them. But no, until then, I need my coin. Like, stop with that. I hate when people do that. To, to start up business owners, quit asking startups to give you stuff for free. Like, that's not cool. Because I guarantee you, you go to another, uh, you're going to go to Bath and Body Works and you will pay the full 20 some odd dollars for a three week. Yes, you will. <laughs> so you should do me the same way. <laughs> all right. So I think I got all the questions. Oh, wait, one more question. Then I, then I got to go get my baby from daycare, y'all. Okay. What metrics should we use to test our candles? Um, so you want to test for hot throw for sure. I mean, that's the whole point, right? You want to test um, to make sure that your wick is, um, you want to test for a full melt pool. So with that first burn, you want to burn at least two to three hours. And depending on how big your vessel is, even four hours, that first burn, make sure it burns edge to edge, a full melt pool. If it doesn't, 
something's not right, especially after a three hour burn. It, you know, so you, you want your testing for a full melt pool, you're testing for hot throw. Um, um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, you want to make sure that it's not burning black or smoke, you know, letting off any smoke because then that's probably a wick issue. And um, you want to also see how, and, and not just the first burn. So you, I try to do at least four to five burn sessions. And so I'll blow it out. And then tomorrow I'll do another burn session for another two hours, blow it out. So I want to make sure that it's burning correctly. The wick is not moving, um, that type of stuff. That's actually a good video idea, which I actually do have a video. Actually, I am going to have a video out, not this, not next Friday, but in two weeks, because I just purchased a Wooden Wick uh, starter kit from Wooden Wick Co. So I'm doing burn sessions, tests with them. And um, well, test for the starter kit, I should say that. And so I'll be showing, I'm actually showing y'all how I do my burn test. So stay tuned. That's a, I'm glad you brought that up. So stay tuned for that video. It'll be in like two weeks. I already have that planned out. And I'll actually be recording it over the weekend so I can have time to do my burn sessions. So about time two weeks get here, I'll have my footage. So I'm glad you said that. Thank you. I have that on my list. Yes, you can send me a candle. Absolutely. I, look, just because I make candles don't mean I don't want any. <laughs> so you absolutely can send me one. DM me and I can shoot you my address. Um, Just want to say I've been binging your videos. I'm actually about to head out the door. Yes. And I'm I'm going to my candle supplier um, that I have here up my street because there's this sexy masculine scent y'all that's about to be a part of my line. And so I got to go stock up. All right, I'm going to take this last question. I got, I got to go get my baby from daycare. What's the best way to put your website out there when you first launch? Just do it. Brand, brand, just do it. That's all you can do. Tell your friends and family on Facebook to follow you on Instagram. <laughs> share your website. Share all your posts since they want a free candle. <laughs> Tell them to share your posts and get your name out there. Follow people, network. Um, follow other brands and see, and you know, you just got to put your, you just got to start following people and they'll, you know, they'll nine times out of 10, they'll follow you back. And you just got to keep, you just got to hustle. You just got to keep putting it out there. Post consistently. It takes a while to build up some following and get people to your uh, website. And that's one thing about having a website. You have to bring the traffic there versus like Etsy or somebody, they already have built in traffic. But I love my website. Yes, it's taken. It takes long to get people over there. But once they do, you know, you'll get your name out there. I'm, I'm still trying. To, I'm, it's only been a year for me, y'all. So I'm still working like I'm a startup. Sometimes you got to stay in that startup mentality. Like I'm still new. I'm still rocking and rolling. Don't get comfortable. Keep hustling. Keep grinding. Like you just launched. And that's the men when I did my relaunch, I acted like this was brand new right? And I'm just rocking it and grinding it. So y'all got it. All right. Thank y'all. It was nice. This is a good little Q&A. Thank you for all the great questions. Uh, I got to go get our baby from daycare. <laughs> so I love y'all though. <laughs> this was a great 45 minute live just about. Yes. Come through. So y'all have a great and safe weekend. Be safe. All right. And I'll holler at y'all Monday. All right.